Hello, hello, dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In today's video, we are going to have a look at how to inspect operation of the ignition switch. Ignition switch comes with different style and shape. Even though their shape and style is slightly different, but their electrical task will be usually similar. They will usually, their task is simply to distribute battery voltage to the different electrical loads that are available on your vehicle. Some of these terminals are designated. On some ignition switch, these terminals are designated. On some ignition switch, the designation is not there. Now, for this particular ignition switch, we have designated terminals. For example, right here, right here, there is terminal 30. Terminal 30 is designated here. It is in encrypted right here. It says terminal 30. Right here, it says terminal 50. Here, it says terminal 75. And here it says terminal 15. Now, these are numbered designations in order to identify terminals of the ignition switch. Terminal 30 will be the line coming from the battery. These two are terminal 30. These two lines, they are lines coming from terminal 30 of the battery. Terminal 30 is a battery positive terminal. As you know, on your vehicle, battery terminals are designated. Terminal 30 refers to the battery positive. 31 refers to battery negative. For this particular case, these two ignition switch terminals are designated as terminal 30. So these are lines coming from the battery. And terminal 1515, this line, is the line going to the ignition terminals which are get powered, which get powered when the ignition is turned to the on position. This includes ignition coils, fuel pump. If there is electrical fuel pump, fuel pump will be supplied of this terminal. If there are electronic control modules, all those are all those components that get supply when the ignition switch is turned on will be powered by terminal 15. That is the IG terminal. Terminal 75 is the accessory position. 75 is a number given for designating accessory position. This is where your car radio operates. If you are car radio, that will be supplied off that terminal 75. This is accessory position. And finally, up here we have terminal 50, 50. Terminal 50 is a starter motor solenoid terminal. When you want to crank your engine, battery supply, battery voltage will be supplied to this terminal. And this is the line coming from the starter motor solenoid. So, in short, the function of the ignition switches to supply this voltage, this will be battery line, battery positive will be connected to this line. So the purpose of the ignition switch is to distribute this voltage to the different terminals according to the position of the ignition switch. Well, there are different key positions. First, it's very good idea to identify the different key positions. The position where the key can be removed is the off position. This is the off position. Now from the off position, try turning it counterclockwise, this way. If the key does move, for example, for our particular case, it moves. If it moves one position, that is usually the accessory position. If it doesn't move from off position, if you turn it counterclockwise and the key doesn't move, then turning it this way, the first position will be the accessory position. The second position will be the on position. And finally, the spring loaded will be the start. But for this particular ignition key, from off position, off is where the cylinder can be, the key can be removed from the cylinder. This way will be accessory. This is off. This is on position, or the this is where IG will be taken off. And finally, we have the spring loaded position. Now, once you know the position of the ignition switch, the different key positions, then place your ignition key on that respective key position and try to figure out if there is electrical continuity between the terminals that are responsible. Terminal 30 should be the base. Terminal 30 should distribute electrical supply to the different terminals, to the ignition terminal, to the start terminal, and to the accessory terminal, respective to the position of the key. So that is how you can identify if this is working or not. The off position is where the key can be removed from the cylinder. This is the off position. If you turn it counterclockwise and if it stays there, if there is a position 
one step counterclockwise, that will be the accessory position. Now, if this ignition switch is working properly, when placed on the accessory position, we should have continuity between terminal 75 and terminal 30. This is because the battery will be supplying electricity to accessory circuit. Let's go ahead and check that. Put your multimeter on continuity. So now the ignition key is placed on the accessory position. We should have continuity between battery terminal 30 and terminal 75. The rest should not have continuity. The rest should not have any continuity. The rest should not have continuity. Only terminal 75 will have continuity. And because these two terminals are terminal 30, they always have continuity. These two lines, they always have continuity. Now, we have checked the accessory circuit of the ignition switch is functional. If I move it one step away, this should be the off position where the cylinder where the key can be removed from the cylinder, on this position, there should not be continuity. There should not be continuity. No continuity, no continuity, no continuity. Now, turning it clockwise one step will put the ignition key on on position. On on position, this is where the ignition coil, electrical fuel pump, electronic control modules, all those engine components that need to get powered in order to run the engine get power from terminal 15 so we should have continuity between terminal 30 and terminal 15 here there is continuity and also on on position radios should keep on working we should have also continuity with line 75 this is the on position. And there should not be continuity with terminal 50. As you can see, there is no continuity with terminal 50. Then, the next position is the spring-loaded start position. Some ignition keys require pushing it down a little in order to put it on start. Push it down a little, then put it on crank. This is to prevent from accidentally putting the ignition switch on start. Once the engine is running, you should not be putting the ignition key on start position, otherwise the pinion will engage the flywheel and that will cause damage to the starter motor. Preventing that is done by having a spring-loaded position. In order to give power to the starter motor, on some ignition switch you should push it down and then turn it clockwise. Now during this time, we should expect continuity between terminal 30, terminal 50, and terminal 15. We have electrical power supply to the ignition coil terminals, to the fuel pumps, and also the starter motor. Let's check. Put it on terminal 30, and let's hold one terminal on terminal 50, and then turn the ignition switch to the start position. You can see there is continuity. Battery line, terminal 50, there is continuity. And the continuity that is already established between the battery terminal 30 and the ignition IG terminal 15 should remain. Let's check. On the start, it should remain also. See? On the start, it will remain. And there should be no continuity with terminal 75 when the ignition switch is turned to start. That, it should go off. See? Full electrical power should be directed to the starter motor because the starter motor is a heavy electrical load. In order to do that, ignition keys usually disconnect the accessory terminal. That is why we don't have continuity between terminal 30 and terminal 75 when the ignition switch is turned to the start position. So this is 
how you can inspect operation of the ignition switch. Now we have checked that terminal 30 have continuity with accessory when put in on accessory position and it should have continuity with terminal 15 when put on on position. Terminal 15 and terminal 75 will have continuity with the terminal 30 and when placed on a start position we should have continuity between terminal 50, battery terminal 30 and then ignition line. So this is how you can inspect operation of the ignition switch. If this continuity is not maintained, if the ignition key is behaving otherwise, it indicates there is a problem with the ignition key. Usually what happens is there are contacts, usually copper contacts are there in this ignition key. If you pry this and remove this black part, you can see there are copper, usually made up of copper, there are contacts. If they wear out over time, that can lead to ignition key problems. So there are different types of ignition key problems. One of them has to do with electrical continuity issue where there is no continuity between the terminals. For example, you turn it on, then there is no supply to the radio, there is no supply to the ignition coil, engine is not turning over. That has to do with electrical problem. And there are also mechanical problems where usually this wear out and then you should not, you will not be able to turn this inside the cylinder. So that is a mechanical damage. So these are some of the common electrical and mechanical problems that happen on the ignition switch. As far as this ignition switch is concerned, we have proved that the ignition key is working fine. So this is a simple method of identifying the functionality of the ignition switch. If you want to know how to check, how to identify the different electrical terminals, for this particular ignition switch, terminals are designated by numbers, but there are ignition switch with no designation. If you want to know how to designate, how to identify the terminals of the ignition switch, we have made video about it. I will leave you the link in the description. You can go check it out. Well, dear viewers, that is, that is all we have for you regarding how to inspect operation of the ignition switch. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new to this channel, do consider subscribing and turn on notifications so that you will be the first to get notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.